Will was a magicless loser born into a world where magic was everything, and people without magical talents were treated worse than slaves. He was always lonely and awkward, but he still had a childhood friend he was in love with. However, she moved on because he had no magical talent. Despite this, he enrolls in a prestigious university with the goal of winning her back. They immediately spring into action while Will thinks about how he might finally catch Elfie's attention if he performs well in this session. Before he even understands the plan, Wig uses his wind magic to launch them into the air at an incredible speed, quickly covering ground. However, they soon start to fall, which scares Will, who wonders what's happening. Fortunately, they stop mid-air before gently landing on the ground, while Will ends up face-planting. Call asks if he's okay. But he quickly gets up, trying to adjust to the new group. Suddenly, the cave behind them explodes and a giant red ant emerges. Will thinks it's just a monster, which wouldn't be a big deal, but it seems they've stumbled upon an ant colony, as a large swarm starts moving toward them. Will knows that wizards aren't good in close combat, meaning he'll have to handle these monsters himself, so he readies his sword. Wig interrupts him and tells him to watch. Suddenly, Lyanna zooms past them at lightning speed. While Wig explains that she comes from a family of knights and is an exception among wizards, being a specialist in close combat. She demonstrates all her skill by destroying the monsters with a single strike, leaving Will stunned. They continue forward, but things aren't going according to Will's plan. He remembers Walk telling him about basic magic spells like Seek, which could help find monsters in the area, but since he can't use this magic, he's unable to find them quickly enough. Another monster appears behind Will, catching him off guard, but he's saved by Julius, who freezes the ant and tells Will not to be a hindrance. Will realizes that if he keeps this up, he won't be able to kill a single beast. Soon after, Wig uses a large wind blade magic circle to wipe out all the surrounding monsters. Wig comments that he expected Will to be of some help, but so far, he has been useless, not even fulfilling his role as the shield. Lyanna, however, defends Will, saying he simply hasn't had the time or opportunity to get into his role and believes that soon they'll be glad to have him with them. Further in the dungeon, they skip collecting the items left by the dead monsters, as it would only slow them down. Cyan tells Wig not to delay them. Will tries to shake off his distraction and start helping, but he's still ineffective, as the monsters are killed before he even gets a good look at them. He just continues trailing behind them through the dungeon like a pack mule, while they handle all the enemies. Soon, Lyanna checks her watch and tells everyone that a day has passed and they should take a short break before moving on. They are in the middle of a cave, which isn't really safe, so Wig uses his elven magic to create an illusion of a fire barrier, which doesn't harm, but is enough to scare off any monster trying to attack them. Lyanna then tells Wig to distribute the rations they brought, so Will immediately puts his backpack on the ground, grabs the food for each team member, and hands it out. When he approaches Wig, the green-haired elf tells him to stay away and just leave the food on the ground, as he doesn't want to touch Will, finding him unworthy. Call is horrified by this discrimination and starts shouting at Wig, but he claims it's not just Will. He doesn't want to be touched by any of them except for Lyanna, since they are all wizards and he's an elf. He only allows Lyanna to touch him because he considers her worthy. Will tells Call to let it go while he sits aside, thinking about how lucky the elven race is. Like dwarves, elves are not from this world, but they are extremely talented magic users and thus respected by all humans. At the top of all wizards is the elven queen, who commands them all. Soon, Lyanna calls a meeting and announces that they are heading to the 10th floor, where the boss monster named Nebra is located. She says defeating this beast will earn them 110 credits, which is an incredibly high amount, and since there is only one monster of this type, they need to ensure they are the first to kill it. She reveals she assembled this team specifically to kill Nebra to be noticed by higher institutions and hunters. Wig, however, questions whether it's wise to go straight for the main course without even sampling the appetizer. Lyanna responds by insulting his mother and saying she wants them to face Nebra with full force and can handle the smaller monsters after defeating the boss. She then says she wants to take the shortest route to the 10th floor and asks if anyone has any objections. Will knows the boss monster will be very dangerous, but he also needs the credits, so he agrees. They soon arrive on the 10th floor, where, to his surprise, they find many monsters already dead on the ground. Will wonders if someone arrived before them, 
but science says it's impossible since they took the shortest route and even skipped all the camps. Will crouches to check one of the dead monsters and realizes it was killed by brute force, not magic, which is very suspicious. Nonetheless, they continue deeper, until they are completely shocked to find Nebra also dead, with the three-headed dog lying on the ground. This scares the wizards, who immediately start using their search magic, while Will has a flashback of Walk telling him that search magic has flaws, as a wizard can always use camouflage magic to hide. But there's also a very dangerous monster that can do the same. Will's heart starts racing as he looks up and sees red eyes. The monster charges an energy beam and fires it at them. Will warns everyone to fall back as he blocks the beam with his sword and deflects it. Before they can understand what's happening, the monster appears behind Wig and throws him against the wall, causing him to bleed. The other wizards start preparing spells, but the monster slams the ground, shaking the entire foundation, and the floor beneath them breaks. Everyone starts falling, but Will immediately runs to the unconscious Wig and saves him during the fall. He gets up and looks around, realizing they are in a strange place and have fallen to a completely different floor. Cyan and Julius are also together and can't believe they've fallen to the 11th floor, which is outside the Academy's territory, so they can't expect to be rescued. Liana, meanwhile, is bleeding from her head and wonders if they will ever leave alive. As the 11th floor is on a completely different level from the others, and only high-ranking wizards are allowed to set foot there. This proves true when a giant snake attacks Will, but he manages to cut off its head, which snaps Wig back to reality, wondering if this loser killed the beast alone. Will immediately tries to help Wig up, but the elf rejects his help and starts bandaging his arm. Will figures they've almost lost all their equipment, but everyone has enough supplies to survive for a maximum of two days. However, since they are on the 11th floor, the best estimate is that they have only one day to escape this hell. He immediately tells Wig that they should look for Call and the others, as that's the only way to survive at this level. Wig says they should just wait for help, as the Academy rules dictate, but Will says that with the monster on the 10th floor, no one will come to their rescue quickly. He's right as two academy professors have been killed and crucified on the rocks, while a horde of monsters causes a stampede at the 8th floor base camp. Professor Eliza tries to control the situation, while Walk realizes something is definitely wrong, and Ed runs to him, saying the event is cancelled and they are moving in because something is very wrong. Back on the 11th floor, Wig continues using search magic, but Will tells him to relax, as it will just tire him out. He tells the elf that he and Kiki will look for nearby monsters, while Wig should search for more distant ones. He states they should keep the fights to a minimum, which surprises Wig, as no one can stay so calm in such a situation, but Will has been in situations like this several times and has learned all about dungeons. Suddenly, they sense a monster approaching, and three pig monsters try to surround them. Will decides to face the two monsters in front, while Wig deals with the one behind. The elf immediately uses his wind magic to push the monster away, and as he turns around, he's shocked to see Will cutting through the strong monsters like they're nothing. He moves among them with incredible speed, dodging attacks while delivering fatal blows. Suddenly, Wig realizes his monster is not dead yet and rushes toward it to attack. The elf realizes he doesn't have much time to counterattack, so he tries to use illusion magic to drive the monster away, but Will shouts at him not to do that. To his surprise, the monster simply goes through the illusion and was about to kill the elf, but Will arrives in time and cuts the monster in half. Wig sits there, still in shock, while Will explains that these pig monsters have no eyes, so illusions don't work on them. This completely breaks Wig, who declares himself the real loser. Will, for his part, wonders where he's gonna find a therapist for this idiot. If you enjoyed it, please give a like and subscribe to the channel to see the continuation. Stay well and see you next time.